Sean Dyche has been sacked as Burnley manager. They have had a shocking season, but this still feels wrong. This is all wrong. Today, we rebuild them, but with a twist. The Burnley board have come to me. They want to rebuild, but we are banned from signing any English players. No English, no Irish, no Scottish, no Welsh. Burnley's Brexit football days are over. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, no. This is the Burnley side we start with, and there is a lot of clearing to do to make sure that we are eligible. I feel like like every YouTuber and their dog has done a video with Burnley where you can only sign British players. So we're changing it up, you know. Maybe it's time for a change. Yep, we are not messing around. Essentially, 90% of the squad has been added to the transfer list. I knew Burnley having a lot of British players was a meme, but I didn't realize how many there were. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six players in the entire squad that aren't British. This first season is about to be a marathon. Our youth academy, we can't have any English players. I the Bradley Faulkner. I'm so sorry, bro. But I mean, I can use these guys. We've got a Moroccan, a Japanese, and a Liechtenstein player. What is that combination? Purely to help out squad numbers. Oh, no, they're all too young. Come on. Starting things off strong, lads. 320,000 pounds for Phil Bardsley. Let's go. Josh Brownhill is out of the club, and so is Ben Mee. It's our first signing in charge of Burnley. He's from South America. It is Pierre Himkapi, the Ecuadorian defender. What his value gone down like four mil since I signed him. Come on, man. Maybe you're the problem. Laters, Lothan. Is this discrimination? Going for a starting striker from the jump. Randall Colo Moani, a man I've never heard of, but a man that I'm very much looking forward to using. 8.5 million pounds in our back pocket for Charlie Taylor as well. A bit of Czech flavor into the side though, as Ladislav Kretzi is joining us. Again! His value! What is what does FIFA have against us? Alright, the random Lichtenstein goalkeeper we had is available to be promoted. He looks like crap, but I'm going to promote him just for squad numbers. Ashley Barnes off on an Italian adventure. A big time departure. One of the guys I don't want to let go. It is Dwight McNeil off to Leverkusen. At least we got him out of the Premier League though, because if we had to verse him consistently, that could be an issue. Jay Rodrigo is also out of the club. Just trying to de-Brexit this side one position at a time. We go to the MLS and Santiago Almada. Another departure that just it just crushes the soul. This one doesn't crush the soul at all, though. Nani? We're getting there, lads. One by one, we are getting there. We do have our Nick Pope replacement, though. It's a slight little downgrade, but I've had to be a little bit more budget-friendly, which is why we're signing Robert Sanchez. Every pound counts at this point. We're broke. We've got ourselves a new right-back, lads. It is Valentin Rosier joining us from Besiktas. Oh, my God, that window was chaotic. I mean, after that window, we're only Tarkovsky away from having a full non English, full non British starting 11. James, is there any possibility you want to change your nationality back to Polish, mate? Would help us a lot. No, for real though. We've got an English scout. I've got to follow through with the lads. We've got to file, fire Daniel Marshall. All right, I'm going to hire an Estonian scout. I want to get myself a good group of youth academy players just for squad numbers. I'm going to send him on a nine month scouting edition to Canada. And straight up, I'm going to sign everybody eligible just for squad depth numbers. We are not in a good position here on the 1st of January. Jeez Louise. Am I worse than Sean Deitch? I guess we'll never know. Bro, nobody is happy in this squad right now, except for Veghorst, who is loving life. I don't think any of these Canadians I've found look any good at all, but I'm promoting them to the squad. I can always just sell them or release them later on, but we just need the squad numbers, honestly, lads. All good things must come to an end. James Tarkovsky out of the club, 17 million pounds. It is time for us to go make this starting 11 and fully not British. Working with a budget here, lads. Our new defender, it's another step back, which isn't gonna help us in our quest to stay up in the Premier League, but Daniel Vivian is joining us from Bilbao. Oh my God, we have survived and we have survived comfortably. I am, I am happy, but I am kind of speechless. Hold up, what? So Chelsea won the Premier League, sick. Aston Villa came second, what is going on? What's going on here? What? Millwall made the FA Cup final. Okay, it seems like that's where the chaos ended. Liverpool win the Champions League, Villarreal win the Europa League, and Frankfurt win the Conference League. Not Tottenham. It's the history of the Tottenham. This has arguably been one of the most chaotic season ones I've ever had in a rebuild before.
We might have broken the Premier League record for the most goalkeepers in a squad. This is utterly ridiculous. We're at a point now with the starting 11 where we can start to upgrade on the players that like we're technically allowed to upgrade on. I'm going to sign David Rahm, a German left back to upgrade Eric Peters, who right now has just regressed into an epic flop. This guy was on loan last season, but we've officially sold him. It's another Englishman, Jacob Badeau. One less goalkeeper. It's a career mode beast, Nathan Collins. Unfortunately, he's Irish. The Welshman Connor Roberts is off to Ralph Sociedad. I'm pretty sure after selling Ashley Westwood, we have sold the large majority of our like respectable English players. Like yeah, in terms of transfer values, it's just about getting rid of a lot of the no name lesser players. I don't want no scrub. I am very happy with this transfer. I tried to sign Ritsu Doan in season one, but didn't have the didn't have the facilities, didn't have the cashola for it. So we're gonna sign the Japanese midfielder from Brighton here in season. Season two. Laters, another goalkeeper gone. Another chaotic window, but we're getting there, lads. We are almost non-British. The memories of Sean Bush slowly evaporating. But lads, we are on the push for 500,000 subscribers before FIFA 23. And if we do that, I am giving one of you guys a custom football kit of your choosing. So make sure you bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button down below. Let's go see how we're doing halfway through the Premier League season. Relegation battle? Don't even know her. I was genuinely not expecting us to go this good at the first half of the season. Let's back it up now, get some business and see if we can push for European football. We didn't have a crazy amount of money to spend on a starting player. So I'm going to sign Karel Edding from Huddersfield, the Dutch center midfielder as a bench player. And also get rid of another Englishman in the process. It is a little bit of a flop in the second half of the season, but I still think we qualified for conference league maybe. Also, I've just got to say fair play to Aston Villa who get Champions League footy once again. Nottingham Forest have won the FA Cup. I was really hoping Newcastle won the Carabao Cup. And just like this, I was hoping As I wonder how Aston Villa actually went. They got second in their group. Aston Villa beat, what is going on? Aston Villa made it to the Champions League quarterfinals. Steven Gerrard is on one. Tottenham won the Europa League. And Porto won an all Portuguese conference league final. But um this season has been unhinged. This is a ridiculous rebuild. <laughs> This is a move that might shock a few of you guys, but I have decided to sell our golden boot winning Wout Weghorst here, the Dutch striker headed to Sevilla. He's hit the 31 year old age mark and I need to make 62 bloody million pounds from him while I still can. There is a lot of pressure for this man to live up to, but our new starting striker is Julian Alvarez. He's signed from Manchester City for 58.2 million pounds. And another notable player departure, Corne is out of the club and off to Bill Powell. We managed to get 38 million pounds for him though, which I'm very happy about. A couple of years ago, this wouldn't have flown, but thankfully Jamal Musiala has changed his nationality from English to German, meaning we've been able to sign him from Bayern Munich. Let's go. A little bit of a backup defender signing here as well. Also, we've sold a bunch of random players that don't really mean too much to the squad. <laughs> no offense, fellas, but this starting 11 is starting to look quality. I did not expect us to be in this strong position in season number three. And we are in the conference league this season. So if we could go on a run there, I'd be a very happy man. Speaking of things that make me a very happy man, manager of the month, baby, let's go. The bar has been set higher than I initially expected it to be. So honestly, I'm trying to push for a title. Vivian has been a loyal servant for this club, but it is time to send him back to his home nation of Spain. Too bad we can't bring any players back to their home nation. And if we consider ourselves genuine title challengers, or at least pushing for European football, we need somebody of Andreas Christensen's caliber, 85 rated, Danish center half, welcome to Turf Moor. I cannot wait for all of the flop players to be gone from the club. I mean, I really shouldn't have promoted as many Canadian players as I did. Also, why did I pronounce Canadian like that? Second in the Premier League, but the exciting thing is we play Champions League footy next season. Also, I've just got to applaud Aston Villa. Bloody hell, lads. West Brom beat Bournemouth to win the FA Cup. Man City win the Carabao Cup. I just want to see Aston Villa win the... Did they go deep again this season? No, they lost to PSG. That is a high-quality Europa League final. Let's actually go, lads. We have dominated, absolutely given Fenerbahce the sausage. What a first season, though, for Julian Alvarez, 28 goals, 10 assists.
We have Champions League football coming to the club this season, so we need to make sure our squad is up to scratch. A new center half in Fabio Andrade, a Brazilian. Welcome to Burnley, brother. And it is time to say goodbye to the main man himself, Ladislav Kretzi. The squad just needs to go to the next level. I told you it was clean out season, lads. 29.5 million pounds to send him Kapi to Real Madrid. What is that headline? Dennis Zakaria, let's go. He's got the reverse English flag, the inverted English flag flag, but it's the Swissman joining us. Also, we have sold a whole load of the Canadian players this window. We're in the Champions League this season. We've only got a few remaining English players that I can't get rid of, so I'm just going to go release the three remaining English players and then be done with this part of the experiment. And we're actually eligible now. So this is what the starting 11 looks like ahead of our first Champions League campaign. The starting 11 is coming along quite nicely, but that bench needs some work. This is an interesting group for our first time the Champions League, but honestly, it makes me happy that I signed Andrade from AS Monaco. We have absolutely walked this group, not a single loss, and we're going through alongside Hoffenheim. Unlucky, Monaco. And in the round of 16, we're going to be versing Atalanta. Life is going quite well in the Premier League as well. Lads, we knew the bench was looking piss poor, so I decided to make some upgrades, and a new left back, Michi Bachuai. I've just realized I've negotiated six-month contract with these guys. I really hope clubs don't come on and sign them on pre-contract. But regardless, we signed a new goalkeeper and a new right midfielder as well. It is our first time in the Champions League knockout rounds, lads. We've got Atalanta on the road to kick things off. The team is looking primed. Do we have enough to get a strong first leg advantage? The scoreline is a 2-0 win. We've got the advantage. We are without our left back, Ram, who has been suspended. But we are at Turf Moor. Can this non-Brexit team get us through to the quarterfinals? Come on, Burnley. It is 2-1. Let's go, baby. An all-English affair, though, lads. The final two English teams reigning in the Champions League. We've got Tottenham in the quarters. The main man, Ram, is back for the first leg. Full-strength starting 11 at home at Turf Moor. Taking on this five at the back. Tottenham side that honestly doesn't look that impressive on paper. Hopefully, they're not impressive on the field. They are impressive on the field as they give us a 2-0 loss in the first leg. All right, lads. We've got a massive, massive task on our hands right here. It is the second leg away in North London. I talked smack on Tottenham in the first leg. So, I'm going to say this is the best team that I've ever seen with my two eyes. Stop the cap. We're going to quick sim, please. Pour for me, recall. Oh, my God. God. I mean, it wasn't even close on aggregate. That scoreline was just a cock tease and we're out in the quarters. We dominated them as well. We may have been dumped out of the Champions League, but lads, we have won a Premier League title with Burnley Football Club added to the trophy cabinet. Four points ahead of Chelsea. Also, it is sad to see the fall from grace for Aston Villa. They've been heroes for the entirety of the rebuild, but now they're mid-table again. Liverpool have won the FA Cup over Stoke and Tottenham win the Carabao Cup. They don't win the Champions League, however. That title goes to Bayern Munich. Milan win the Europa League. And Man City, a bit of a fall down from them, winning the Conference League. Alvarez, oh my god, the star of the show this season. I want to go balls to the wall and get ourselves as deep into the Champions League as we can. We have signed Edison on a cut price deal. He had 12 months remaining on his contract. Welcome and happily welcome to Burnley, brother. This was one of the guys I tried to sign back in season number one. I am so glad to have him. It is Kim Min Jae joining us here at Burnley as a backup defender. Also, lads, I've got to say how good do the gold Premier League badges look. Champions, baby, come on. And we're also going to sign this man here, Angelo Fulgini, joining us as a backup attacking midfielder. I've been trying to sell some of our backup players, but it just won't happen in terms of getting offers. I want to make this squad not bad overall anymore. I thought signing all these Canadians back in season one was an absolute masterstroke, but it has been a massive L. This team looks like the real deal. Our bench is actually solid as now. We've got some decent reserve quality players as well. Let's have a red hot crack at the Champions League. And in terms of our Champions League group, it is bugged the hell out. We've got Fiorentina. We've got Club Bruges and we've got team name abbreviation 15 underscore underscore zero. Right. That's a bummer. 
Okay. It's that they, they, they're not even showing up in the in the calendar. I'm just gonna simulate to this date and see if they're actually a team. Okay, I don't know who it is. Let's see, let's click on it. They had to forfeit, what? Have we broken FIFA? So despite all the chaos in the group stages, we have qualified for the knockout rounds. We've actually done it in second position. Fair play to Club Bruges, they win the league. And there is no surprise to see that that random team forfeited every single game. I've never seen that before. But in the round of 16, we have been stacked against it. It is a tough challenge as we verse Atletico Madrid. Business as normal though in the Premier League. And we're going to make an incy wincy wincy little upgrade here at the striker role, the backup striker role, as we sign the Ukrainian striker, Daniel Sikon. All right, lads, we are right into the thick of it here at home against Atletico Madrid. This is as good a test as any. I am not going to stuff around. We're going to simulate the first leg here at Turf Moor and the scoreline is a 2-1 win. It could have easily been though 3-1 if Almar had caught that penalty. No Jamal Musiala here for what is a massive second leg away at the former Wanda Metropolitano. It is Atletico Madrid versus Burnley. Oh lads, I'm nervous. I am nervous. We're gonna quick sim it here in season number five and we win 2-0. Alvarez with the brace. That gives me a world of confidence. Come on Burnley, come on you clarets. It is Napoli in this quarter five. Finals. This is where we fell down last year. Let's see if we can break over the hump. At home, once again here, lads. Want to lay the foundations like we did against Atletico Madrid. We've got Musiala back into the side. It is a full-strength squad coming out here against Napoli. Come on, lads. Can we again 2-0? You love to see it. Come on. Here we go, lads. We have the advantage. But 2-0 is one of the most dangerous scorelines in football. Anything can happen over 90 minutes. But hopefully the end result is us securing our passage to the Champions League quarterfinals. Quick simming here in the second leg, and we do it. It is a 5-2 aggregate win. Let's go. Well, we're the only non-Spanish team remaining in the Champions League semi-finals here. It is a team where the one leg is going to be played in Paradise and the other leg is going to be played in Barcelona. Let's go, Burnley. All right, lads. Beginning season, or leg one, I should say, at one of Europe's most desirable destinations for holidays. It is not Barcelona. We are playing in Burnley for the first leg. They have got a star-studded side here, Barcelona. Can we get ourselves off to a dream start we get the lead. It's a narrow win. Ansu Fati's goal, though, right at the death, leaves the door open for this second leg. It is crunch time, ladies and gentlemen. This is the tough position we find ourselves in. Champions League final spot on the line. Heading to one of the most famous structures in world sport. Not just world football, the Camp Nou. We need to close it out and get Burnley into the promised land. We simulated, and the scoreline is a 3-1 win. We're headed to the Champions League final. I am bloody praying though that Musiala is not suspended again. Well, well, well. Many people have thought that it was going to be an El Clasico final, but both of us winning Villarreal versus Burnley. I don't know if I've ever versed Villarreal in a Champions League final before. They're doing well in real life. Taking a look around the grounds though, Arsenal break their European drought. Bill Bow in the Conference League. We add another Premier League title to the trophy cabinet and that means we're playing Champions League footy again next season. Aston Villa creeping closer and closer to the relegation battle. I kind of wanted them to, I wanted them to win a Champions League in this video. That be fun. We lost the Community Shield on penalties. Meanwhile, Man United win the FA Cup and we take down Crystal Palace to get the Carabao Cup into our trophy cabinet. So we are pushing for a treble. But here's a look at the squad report as we get ready for the Champions League final. One of the most insane rebuilds we have had the pleasure of doing as of late. It has been absolute chaos. And I am so excited to see how we perform in this Champions League final. Every man and their dog does rebuilds with Burnley with only British players. But we have flipped the switch. And now with this non-British Burnley team, we are one win away from a Champions League title. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Champions League final time. We're playing in Spain, but we're going to be leaving the country as champions of Europe. Keeping it slow here. Sending this one through to Colo. Colo holding it up, putting it in the middle. Oh, yes. What a start. What was that? Did you guys see how delayed the goalkeeper diving was? Oh my God. That goalkeeper was on lag. That is one of the funniest things I've seen in a long time. But we have the lead here in the Champions League final. That was easy as it comes. Now look, get, get, get ready for this lad. So that defender goes in there and look, he heads it. It's over the line and then he dives. That is that is actually funny. What are you doing, bro? What are you doing? 
I need to prove to you guys as well. This, there's no sliders. There's no goalkeeper ability thing going down. He's just had a mare. Come on. Can we get, can we double our advantage? Oh, we just turned it there. Almada shoots and that's a great save. Got the corner though. Going to try putting it on the corner. The penalty spot here. Christensen, Christensen, Christensen. Follow up. 2-0. That is so scrappy there from Villarreal. And we are absolutely dominating in this Champions League. Well, I've never seen this celebration, but what the hell? I've never seen this celebration before. All right, I'm having fun. Come on. I want to put a cricket score. We've turned with Colo. No. Yes. Yes, it's 3-0. We're going to put on a cricket score. Oh, my God. They're coming through here, Villarreal. They've come back with a bit of vengeance. What is this goalkeeping? Oh, I mean, not goalkeeping. Focus up, Jared. Jesus Christ. Feed it down the line. Yes, good stuff. He's got the pace, Duan. King of Japan himself. We're going to square through there. Almada. Oh. Come on, lads. I want a 4-0 scoreline here. We're putting it through. It's going to Andrade. Coming out. Almada winning that one nicely. Getting past the terrible challenge. Putting in the middle. It's going to be 4. This is too easy. This is one of the easiest Champions League finals we have ever had. So I want to keep adding to this goal scoring lit tally. Oh, it's gone through. Oh, that's comical. That is comical. And it's 5 0 to start the second half. Oh, this is absolute destruction. Oh, my God. This this Villarreal team actually could be the worst team I've ever versed in the Champions League final. Our team's gone, but oh, my God. Can we make it 6 0? Straight off the kickoff. Turning. Colo sending it to the shots. It's 6. Oh, my God. It's 6 0. Holy hell. Zakaria, look how much space I could go through to Colo. We're going to go through to Colo. Colo. Alvarez, Alvarez for his fourth. Alvarez gets four goals and we are seven nil up. Holy hell. This could be the biggest score in rebuild final history. Almada going up. They're going to get the quick one, two going. Yes, beautiful. Alvarez in behind. Alvarez for his fifth goal. It's a nil. What the hell? Oh my God. You get a goal. You get a goal. Everybody gets a goal. I want to get double digits, lads. Almada's going to ping this ball in there. It's going to be Christensen. Come again. Who's that? It's the curry. I'm just hitting B. Oh. Colo. It's nine. We might actually get double digits. Holy hell. I want double digits. This is ridiculous. It's Alvarez. He's already got five to his name. He's killing them for pace here. Feeding it through to Colo. Colo. Shooting on to off the post. The keeper made the save. It's in off the post though. We've got 10. We've got 10. That's the craziest thing ever. I feel like I'm playing against amateur right now. Oh my, these, what is this team doing? Make it 11. Almada through to Alvarez. It's 11. <laughs> it's 11 mil. It's 11 mil. What? Come on, let's see how far we can push it. Oh my God, Alvarez getting, oh, get Alvarez in behind, Alvarez, Alvarez, feed it, Almada, Almada, oh, good save from the keeper. There's two minutes remaining, lads. Can we get the 12th goal to put the cherry on the top? Go through Jamal. Oh, we might have a sweaty goal. Is he onside? I don't know if he's onside. We're gonna feed it, Almada deflected, corner. Opportunity of the game. I want a 12th goal. It goes into Andrade. It's gonna come out to Christensen. And the referee blows the full-time whistle. 11-0 in the Champions League final. And Burnley are champions of Europe. I have never seen anything like that in my life. I am shocked. Lads, that is unbelievable. Thank you for watching this rebuild. Make sure you leave a like on the video. Subscribe and savor up these title celebrations. It has been Jared HD here. I am out. Peace. Oh, my God.